on today's episode. As you can no doubt hear, it's an awful lot more windy than I would normally want to fly in, but I really wanted to show you what I've achieved today, and that is to control the Parrot Bebop 2 via my Tyrannus. I've programmed it up. Wind permitting, we'll see if the Parrot will fly. Now clearly it is struggling in the wind. As you can see I've got forward control and to the side. Oops, bring it up. It is really being blown around but even so you can see that I have control with my Tyrannus to the left to the right, backwards towards me. Let's go up a bit further. One of the things I wanted to try was a return to home before, which wasn't working for me. Well, I can see we have two green GPS, so let's flick the return to home. And she's turned around. Not sure if you can see this on the camera. She's going up now to the 30 meters coming across towards me. It's gone a little bit further. I was probably going to have to bash into my camera. But no, that's pretty much where it took off from. If I only had a camera on the drone, it would be even better. Pressing the landing switch. Excellent. I just hope we caught some of that on the on the camera. Let's see if we can go again. This is quite an amazing little drone. This. I'm so thankful to Johan in South Africa taken all the effort to uh, get it out to me here having a lot of fun with it as you can see so I guess you're wondering how it is that I'm able to fly this thing with my Tyrannus so let's get back inside before I get blown away and I'll show you how it's done a little background for those who are unfamiliar with the channel this parrot drone was sent to me by Johan from South Africa where it had been crashed in a game reserve where it was flying illegally. It had been left out there for quite some considerable time and when it was recovered the original battery was completely bloated and, and puffed and uh, Johan took that apart before sending it kindly to me. Two main issues with it and there is a playlist that I've made on the other videos in what will become no doubt a series the two issues, one is a personal issue with the smartphone control, I just really couldn't get on with it, uh, I don't like that. I also have a Hubson uh, drone which I modified for Wi-Fi, but I don't really like it, I prefer the traditional sticks. The second issue is that the camera is not working. Now this is the camera module from the drone, I don't know whether it's the camera itself or whether it's the motherboard that is faulty. If I was a betting man, I would probably put my money on it being the camera module, which does it. I think the, the flex cables are quite a weak link, quite literally, in this design. But I'm not prepared to spring 150 euros to find out. Alternatives to flying the drone with a smartphone would, of course, be the Parrot Sky Controller. That, I think, runs around 250-odd euros, which is about the same as I paid for the Tyrannus but the Tyrannus is infinitely flexible, whereas the Sky Controller can only control the Parrot products. What to do then? In the past, I'd connected my Tyrannus to my computer and used it with a flight simulator, and that seemed quite successful. Yes, it has USB connectivity. That was the first part of my journey. I also noted that within the Free Flight Pro app from Parrot, there was the option to use either the Sky Controller, or I suspected 
It may be able to be flown by a PS3 controller or an Xbox controller, but having neither of those, I was unable to, to validate that. But I got to thinking about, could we connect the Tyrannus to my smartphone? And the answer is yes. Being an Android guy, the way to go is OTG. So this is a little OTG cable adapter which connects to the smartphone and then the standard USB lead to the Tyrannus. Hooking it all together to my surprise, the free flight app recognized the Tyrannus. Now it recognized it as something it called an FR Sky Tyrannus joypad. And clearly I had no idea of what the channel mappings would need to be. But that was my starting point. Let's take a look at the configuration now. Firstly, connecting the transmitter to the phone. Don't forget you need the OTG cable to do this. Launching FreeFlight Pro. And the FR Sky Tyrannus. If we take a look at the buttons mapping, you can see that fairly conventionally the two central sticks are controlling the throttle or altitude, uh, the pitch, roll and yaw, those being the analog controls. Then if we look down the takeoff and landing button, and the other one that I've defined is the return to home on buttons A and B as they would be on there. Focusing in now on the transmitter settings, if we page across and look at the channels monitor, the throttle is in fact on channel 2, the yaw is on channel 1, pitch is on channel 6, and the roll on channel 3. Now I found those by trial and error uh, one of the errors was very interesting because when I set the throttle up, it was in fact reversed. So as soon as I took off, the thing shot up to 30 meters, which was uh, interesting, especially given the winds that we were having at the time. So those are the analog controls. Now, how about the buttons? For example, the takeoff and landing on button A. Well, how do we define that? The answer is I looked at the OpenTX joystick USB configuration and discovered that the first eight channels are analog and then there are following 24 channels which are digital, i.e. The, the buttons. If we look now at the mixer settings that I have set up, channel 1 rudder, channel 2 throttle, channel 3 elevator and channel 6 the aileron, if I move down, the first digital channel, if you will, is channel 9, and I've assigned that to the SF switch, which is the one at the top left on the back. You can see it switching there. So the first available digital channel 9 becomes the A button. Similarly, channel 10 is the B button, and I've assigned that to the momentary switch at the top right of the Tyrannus which will be the return to home. Those are all the buttons that I've configured at the moment, uh, as unfortunately the camera doesn't work on my drone, and therefore I haven't bothered to set up any of the camera control buttons. But I think you get the general idea now, and it works very well. There is still some experimentation to do. I haven't messed around with changing the sensitivity from linear to exponential, for example, that could prove interesting. But it's the way to go, I feel. Maybe one day I'll encounter a reasonable deal on uh, a Sky Controller and do some comparisons with that. Who knows?